Hi, I'm Lori with CraftRoomTime.com and I'm here to introduce you to a wonderful new series that we're starting. It's called Cricut This. In our design series, we're going to be taking every room of your house and showing you ways to get that decorator look with Cricut products. So we'll start with a dining room. We're going to transform a dining room into a beautiful farmhouse dining room and show you some wonderful Cricut accessories to go along in your dining room. We're partnering along with Comfy Cozy Home and in that series you'll learn how to turn furniture into wonderful pieces of art as well. So each week we'll bring you a new look that will go along with the room that we're transforming. I hope you get a chance to check out both on Comfy Cozy Home for the furniture and Cricut This for the Cricut decor items. I hope I get a chance to talk with you in ComfyCozyHome.com's Facebook group as well as CraftRoomTime.com's Facebook group. You can find all of this information in the description below with links. Be sure to leave a comment below if you have any questions or if you find something particular that you really like. We'd love to hear your comments. And be sure to like and subscribe our channel so you get notifications of the next episodes. Our first project in, in this series is how to turn a buffet into a farmhouse style buffet using stenciling and paint. First we're going to start by preparing the buffet and I'm going to tape the masking tape, the painter's tape, all the way around the mirror just to protect it from when we're painting. Okay, then we're going to use 220 fine sandpaper and a nice trick about sandpaper is if you fold it in thirds and then fold it over on itself, it won't slip away from you. And then you can unfold it and use the other sides as well. So I'm just going to give it a light sanding. you've done sanding, you want to take a piece of cheesecloth and wipe off all of the dust from the sanding, or I just use a really lightly damp paper towel just to get all the dust off. Okay, at this point then you also want to um, fix anything that's missing, any of the drawer stops or the latches on the inside, any of the veneer on the or on the sides or on the top, um, but other than that, you're ready to start painting. I'm using the Colorplace Ultra interior paint, ready to use, antique white, and it's scrubbable, flat. And if you use a flat paint, it hides the imperfections in the wood more than a shiny semi-gloss would do, or even a satin. Um, you can also, once you put the flat on, you can also spray it um, to prevent it from getting any fingerprints or anything like that. Um, I like using the flat. Now I'm gonna use the paint and just go ahead and I use the foam brushes to paint on. I think it's better it doesn't leave paint brush streaks. And I'll just get it on there so it's on both sides. Not too much, not too little. And then I'll just start painting in one corner, just back and forth, and I'm going to go with the wood grain on this. And this is probably going to take about three coats, probably. You can see. 
see, I have the first coat, I don't really worry about too much about um, what it looks like other than I don't want any drips or spills or any obvious lines. I just want it covered at this point. So the other coats will fill in what you missed and I'll make it nice and smooth. Okay, so don't worry too much about this first coat, just get it on there. And you don't have to worry about it drying either, but if you do walk away at this point, just make sure that everything's all found out and that there's no, um, nothing sticking up, see like that. And so if you decide you need to walk away, then that can dry and you're fine. The nice thing about using flat paint is that it's usually dry on one part when you're done with the other parts. So at this point I've got one layer done, so I'm just going to go ahead and start on another one. But what you can do, rub your hand along to see if there's any raised spots, and then just gently sand it off with a little bit of sandpaper, and then paint over again. Okay, we've got the second coat on, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the third coat. So now we're ready for the fourth coat. So now I'm gonna do the drawers. Bring my paper out here. And what I want to do is I want to stencil them. So on my Cricut, I made a design and I need to cut one out okay and then I'm going to I'm just going to weed out the design and leave it a stencil of course you could use this for another project if you like to put it on transfer taper paper and take it off but for this project I'm not going to be saving this. I just want the stencil part that I need. piece is dry. I'm going to go ahead and add some character to it by sanding off some of the edges to expose the wood. And I'll just do this until I get it where I like it. It just gives it some character and you can see some of the shapes. Can you do that? Exacto knife to peel it off and just be careful as you go. It's just extra paint from the keyhole. So I'm scraping it off. Be careful, make 
make sure you're just getting that sticker part. And hopefully when you peel it, you'll be able to peel off most of it at one time. Time to start using the polycrylic to cover the the paint so that you can place stuff on it and it won't chip away and um, provide a little protection to your piece. Just going to use a sponge brush as well and then put on one coat of the polycrylic and then let it dry. So the directions say to stir it really well. I'm going to go ahead and give it a good stir and I'm just using a screwdriver so I can just wipe it off real easily with my paper towel. Makes it very simple. Okay, And then it says to use one light coat and then sand and then another light coat and sand and then your final third coat. Hope you enjoyed watching our first episode of the Buffet Makeover and be sure to stay tuned for our next episode where I know you're going to enjoy learning how to make beautiful wall decor out of paper with the Cricut.